UN Security Council held a lot of sessions on Ukrainian issue during the year. But Russia carried on to support pro-Russian rebels in the east of Ukraine and veto all UN resolution referring Ukrainian situation. So is there an opportunity to recognize Russia as an aggressor state and to deprive the uh, veto right in UN? Well, first, let me say how amazing it is to be in Ukraine having uh, spoken up on behalf of Ukraine at these 30 plus sessions of the Security Council. Um, sometimes when I'm in the Security Council, I feel like uh, I'm in what I call upside down land, where Russia says what is down is up and Russia says what is white is black and, and vice versa. And so it's, it's great to be in Ukraine and to be getting the facts and, and the truth um, up close, um, as well as, of course, as we always do from our embassy. Um, I think that the fact that Russia has the power it does on the Security Council um, at the very time that it is committing this aggression against its neighbor uh, is extremely unfortunate and disturbing. Uh, the permanent members of the Security Council, of which the United States is also one, uh, carry with them a tremendous burden and responsibility and privilege, uh, which is that as the World War II victors 70 years ago, we were given this sacred right of the veto. And to see that veto abused uh, and to see the UN Charter flagrantly violated um, uh, is, uh, again, deeply uh, disturbing. I think that what we've done, though, is found ways outside the UN Security Council to show Russian aggression, whether that's sponsoring the OSCE or the Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights, where they document just what Russia is doing in terms of arming, in terms of ceasefire violations, or whether it's working with Western democracies um, who uh, respect and celebrate the same principles that Ukraine is trying to realize here at home. Those democracies have really come together over this issue. And the very fact of uh, their condemnation of Russia is evident not only in their statements, but in the sanctions uh, against Russia, which have been crippling. So uh, yes, it would be good if the Security Council would do what it was supposed to do, which is to promote international peace and security. Uh, but we can't allow ourselves to be distracted by the fact that it can't because it's biased by, by Russia's presence and we have to instead focus on all the other tools that we have to, to isolate Russia and to make sure that the facts are clear for the world to see and for history. But when UN will make a decision for a peacekeeping mission to be deployed in Ukraine, is it possible or not? Well, the question of a peacekeeping mission is very tied up with the question about the Russian veto because Recall that any peacekeeping mission that we sent here would require Russian approval. And I don't know about you, uh, but it worries me greatly, the idea of having to get President Putin's support for an international force uh, in Ukraine. I, I assume it would be a force that he would like, and if it's a force that he would like, I can't imagine it's a force that the Ukrainian people uh, would support and respect. Do you agree with the White House uh, solution not to deliver lethal weapons to Ukraine? Well, as you know, we've provided a lot of security assistance uh, in terms of armored vehicles and Humvees and, and so forth and counter mortar radar. Um, but moving in a direction of providing uh, lethal weapons um, is something that we worry, President Obama worries, uh, would increase the risk of a military escalation at just the time that we are trying to pursue implementation of Minsk and ensure some kind of political end to this crisis. And so um, right now we're emphasizing the diplomatic and the political, uh, although the Minsk agreements, the fulfillment of the Minsk agreements has been very poor uh, by the separatists and by Russia, nonetheless, it has brought a measure of calm uh, it was interrupted recently, of course, uh, in 
uh, the Donbass region, but it has brought a measure of calm to families who had suffered so much, and it's given uh, the Kyiv authorities the chance to really focus on reforms and getting the economy back on track. So we're still very invested in Minsk implementation and in using uh, other tools, economic, political, isolation, uh, as a way of uh, seeking to change President Putin's calculus. What could change President Obama might in this question? Um, I think right now, again, we're focused on Minsk implementation and uh, urging our friends in Ukraine uh, to continue to build up the model of democracy, the anti-corruption efforts that are being undertaken. Um, and we will continue, we're constantly reassessing what makes sense in the moment, but our investment now is in political implementation. A lot of Ukrainian citizens are interested in it. How uh, can you keep your temper under control, <laughs> speaking with uh, Russian ambassador Churkin? And could you imagine that Churkin will acknowledge uh, Russian aggression in Ukraine? Um, I uh, am Irish, and so Irish have terrible tempers. <laughs> So I, I really have to discipline myself and, and uh, focus on what's important, which is professionally, and not, not emotionally, but professionally documenting the abuses, documenting the acts of aggression, documenting the arms that are coming across the border, and allowing the facts to speak for themselves. And I think um, those facts have been devastating. So even though uh, I, th I get the sense from being here that Ukrainian citizens are very upset about what they hear from uh, the representative of the Russian Federation, I can tell you that in the UN Security Council, he's convincing nobody. Uh, I don't think anybody uh, believes what is said, and in instead, again, the careful documentation of what we know to be happening here, using drawing on the work of international organizations that are independent, um, that uh, has proven very, very powerful as a rebuttal uh, to some of what he said. Better, better than losing one's temper, I think. What is the main result or achievement of being here? I'm overwhelmed uh, by the Ukrainian spirit and the tendency that people seem to have to just get on with it. And by get on with it, I mean get on with the spirit of the Maidan, get on with the democratic transformation, get on with the reforms. Um, I have a lot of sympathy for those who are saying, wait, you know, Russia is attacking us from the outside. We have to focus on that. Um, and I would probably be very tempted uh, just to, to focus on the one struggle. But I'm amazed at how uh, people are, on the one hand, doing everything they can to defend themselves, but on the other hand, simultaneously taking on deep structural flaws in the system here, taking on really entrenched interests and doing so with such tenacity and, and, and single-mindedness. I mean, I really, I think Ukraine is on the road to becoming a model for, for countries all around the world. If, if people can stay focused on that reform uh, effort at the same time as we all band together to try to isolate Russia and have it stop its aggression. We're now on Maidan. I know that you've paid tribute to Ukrainians killed here. So what do you feel being here, staying here on this special place for Ukrainians? It's extremely moving. You know, the faces of people, all the photographs of the, the heavenly hundred, I guess they're called, um, thinking about the lives that they could be leading now, the reforms that they could be participating in. Um, I think uh, it, was, it was overwhelming for me yesterday just looking at their faces. And one thing that's really important, I think, on the Maidan is also um, it's to remember the, also the 6,000 people who were killed in the, in, the, in the conflict. And so this is a, a place of remembrance, um, but it's also a place of activation. You know, I feel like you come here and you just tell yourself, I've got to do more. There's always more to be done. And this uh, counts for the United States, but it counts also for every Ukrainian. So I hope young people come here and it gives them, uh, again, more of the spirit to get on with it and to transform this country.